you might have heard that intermittent fasting is very good for you, but what about the health benefits of dry fasting? Yeah, you heard it correctly. Dry fasting is a thing, and it turns out that it may be more effective than you might think. When regular intermittent fasting with water is quite common amongst health practitioners, then dry fasting that excludes all liquids is much rarer. This is because dehydration can become more dangerous a lot faster than simply avoiding food. <laughs> And to be honest, when I first heard about it, then I thought this was crazy. What do you mean you're not gonna drink water even? What kind of place is this? It's true that several weeks of no hydration may be lethal, but dry fasting for a few days may have a beneficial hormetic effect. You won't actually become dehydrated during the first days of dry fasting because your body is gonna start producing its own water. So in this video I'm going to go through some of the benefits of dry fasting and how you can actually do it. And I also have to put a massive disclaimer. Dry fasting is not suitable for beginners and it shouldn't be done without prior knowledge. So let's begin. Extended fasting for 3-5 to five days resets your immune system by activating stem cells and rejuvenating the body through autophagy. It's thought that one day of dry fasting equals 3 days of water fasting. Regular intermittent fasting already has many health benefits like reduced blood sugar, decreased inflammation, lower insulin, improved fat loss, mental clarity and anti-tumor properties. The reason why dry fasting is more effective than regular fasting is that bacteria and fungi, they need water to exist. If the disease and pathogens, they're not getting access to hydration, then they're simply gonna die. That's why dry fasting allows you to rejuvenate yourself even faster than with regular fasting. While dry fasting, your body begins to obtain the water it needs from the cells. On average, 60% of your body is made of H2O molecules and it's the main component of muscle tissue, cells and organs. And again, when I first heard about it, it was like crazy, how is this even possible? I don't need it. But after I did some research and I looked at some of these studies, then I must say that I've changed my mind a bit. It can be more powerful and it can be effective in some situations. So I decided to delve deeper into the research. A Russian scientist, Dr. Filonov, has supervised thousands of dry fasts, the longest of which has lasted for 18 days. <laughs> That goes to show that the human body can survive longer without water. And again, the reason is because your body begins to produce its own water by burning some fat. After you switch into ketosis and start burning your own body fat for fuel, you release hydrogen that's found in fatty acid molecules and you release them into the bloodstream. Dr. Filonov estimated that the human body can produce up to a liter of internally metabolized water every day. This endogenously created water is actually more pure and cleaner than water you drink from outside sources because it doesn't have toxins found in most water. That's why it can't be said that it's a complete abstinence from food or water. Your body actually stores a lot of the nutrients it needs inside the cells. Your adipose tissue is like a massive pantry that can deposit hundreds of thousands of calories. Your glycogen stores store energy that can be used to fuel your physical activity and you don't need to eat carbohydrates to refill them either because triglyceride molecules can be converted into glucose through gluconeogenesis. A lot of micronutrients like magnesium and calcium get stored in the bones that can be used while fasting. One study on 5 days of dry fasting found that the values of blood pressure, heart rate, hemoglobin saturation, glucose, potassium and creatinine remained quite stable, while creatine clearance increased up to 167%. Recycling of old damaged cells and waste material through the process of autophagy creates energy and hydrogen. Dehydration also inhibits mTOR and promotes AMPK which will stimulate more autophagy and longevity of healthy cells. While you're dry fasting you're gonna actually keep on urinating because you're still producing water. But still, it doesn't mean that you can't get dehydrated. <laughs> it's never a good idea to push your body to the extremes if you're not able to handle it. So it's very important to pay attention to these kinds of things. 
dry fasting is an advanced version of intermittent fasting and before you try it you should have been practicing IF for quite a long time you should have definitely done some water fasting for three to five days before that because you need to develop some mitochondrial density even before you try anything like that and of course doing keto for at least once is going to you know allow your mitochondria to have this reference experience of burning your endogenous fat for fuel I personally haven't dry fasted for any longer than a day and I don't think it's actually needed it's really simple you simply don't eat you don't drink you don't go dancing in the rain you don't go plunge yourself in the snow you simply relax you may experience some lower levels of energy than with regular water fasting but I think that's normal to not get dangerously dehydrated you should drink adequate amounts of water sodium and vegetables the day before to get your minerals in check in the morning, what I like to do is to have this very small dose of water with some pink rock salt, maybe 100 milliliters of water, so that I would balance my electrolytes and uh, reduce cortisol. I also like to add one teaspoon of apple cider vinegar to promote ketosis and autophagy. It's like this small kickstarter boost that's going to promote the effectiveness of the fast. During the day, I'm not consuming any liquids from water, tea, coffee or anything else. It would be better to avoid strenuous physical activities as well to prevent muscle cramps. You don't want to expose yourself to too much heat either, like with saunas, baths or steam rooms. If you're dry fasting only during the day, then you can break the dehydration period with a glass of salted water in the evening. Then I would continue with more lemon juice water and apple cider vinegar. That is so good. After that, you can eat a low glycemic meal that maintains stable blood sugar levels and insulin. If you're dry fasting for any longer than 24 hours, then you would simply go to bed without eating or drinking anything. In that case, you would have to be very cautious and you have to take responsibility for your own decisions. Again, do your research and prepare yourself in advance. It sounds a lot crazier than it actually is. No water! <coughs> it can become dangerous if you do it too much. Anything in excess is gonna have a negative side effect. However, the human body has developed many of these adaptive mechanisms like hormesis and AMPK for dealing with periods of deprivation and stress. Physiological stresses in the right amounts can be beneficial if they're coupled with adequate recovery and rejuvenation. And that's why I've changed my mind about dry fasting as well. It's, it sounds very dangerous, it sounds very interesting, it sounds very powerful, and uh, I'm definitely gonna keep on learning more about it and uh, practicing it myself. I wouldn't think that you need to do it every day, all day, but I think like having at least a few hours of dehydration every day is going to be is going to have a much beneficial response even if you don't drink anything for let's say 8 to 10 hours you're still gonna have some sort of a positive effect to some degree do not my friends become addicted to water it will take hold of you and you will resent its absence that is so Good. But other than that, thanks for watching. My name is Seem. Stay fat, adapted. <coughs> Stay empowered.